Let's get well, let's get started and we'll just dig in. I'll just repeat myself a few times. So uh, tonight I'm going to be doing some bench work. Uh, Ed again from Pinball Mayhem and also Victory Glass. Uh, I have a speaker kit for a 4002, 4001 model Wurlitzer speaker. And uh, let me switch over to the bench and uh, and uh, hey Jay Sergeant, great to see you too. Thank you for tuning in. I'm gonna uh, just switch over to the bench for you because I'm sure you're done looking at me. And uh, want to show a little bit of uh, what we what we got going here. So uh, I have. This is all the parts, well not actually all the parts, this is most of the parts. I'm going to actually switch something over here to the right. Alright, so yeah, this is most of the parts um, for a, a Wurlitzer 4002 speaker. And I know it's kind of strange to keep saying speaker and we're going to be building it. It's not just the speaker cone uh, in establishments like, like uh, dance halls or larger areas where they had just a... 1015 uh, they wanted to project that sound everywhere so you need external speakers sometimes external amplifiers you know a network of, of uh, hardware that was available in 1946 and 1947 and this speaker was designed specifically to go with the 1015 jukebox that plays uh, 78s that one is an original 19 I think it's late 1946 but they made that that model for two years very popular <laughs> uh, so um, I just want to go over some of these parts. This is a kit that will be shortly available to build uh, at Victory Glass. Right now we're just kind of making out the final details, making sure we can get some in. It's going to have a lot of options. So originally this uh, speaker was announced to look something kind of like that. And it had the silver with the blue and oh no so the purple and the red points this is actually out of the uh, uh, the brochure and they never actually made that speaker what they did is they ended up making a speaker with star points that were red green and yellow and let me uh, let me take a couple of these out of here so you can see and uh, that was the actual 4002 model speaker had these points plastic all backlit and there was one that was actually 4000 that was all stainless steel and they were just backlit light would come out the back um, <clears throat> so these these points were uh, what they produced that's the 4002 the 4000 so all stainless steel and um, uh, we do plan on having 4000 kits that are going to be more of a chrome plastic that you could build and we have the 4002 now so what we call the one that they never produced, that they call the 4002, uh, we're going to call it the 4001 speaker. And uh, what we got here is some, uh, here's one of the purple points. It's, it's a silvered uh, background and uh, a purple that will shine light through. So you get kind of both of both, best of both worlds. You get some nice color, you get some of the silvering, and you get the lights coming through. Now, uh, these are actually the same size as the original, so this is a reproduction of one per one. I believe the only difference on our holes, or our, on ours and the originals, is the location of these two holes. So uh, you have these dividers that go between there. Uh, so if you got an original, you may have to drill the holes in a different spot. I believe we, we, we may be getting some original locations. I'm going to put these off to the side right now because I don't need my desk. <laughs> uh, Full of, full of items. So the next thing uh, I want to talk about is the actual uh, speaker box. Now here's the wiring harness, another part that's going to come with it. So I'm going to actually also put this off to the side because I want as much bench space as I can for putting the star speaker together. It's going to be pretty big once you get this all. So we have the, the ring that the points will be going on. We'll be assembling that. Now here is our the box. And this box has a speaker in it. And what we're going to do is when um, someone purchases this, we'll pre-assemble part of this. We'll put the speaker in the box, we'll put the bracket on the back. But there's a reason I am not doing that, or I did not do that ahead of time today, is because um, we got a couple speaker grill options. So most of the time, this is the most popular grill that, uh, uh, that we're expecting to, be, you know, to have sell. It's a very nice, I, I really like it, it's, it's cool. It was, it was my backup grill. But um, uh, 
with this grill, you can have the speaker and everything pre-installed when you're building it. And um, but I want to go closer to what was originally in this picture, where it had like a silver cloth with a star. And we will sell it just a plain speaker cloth that's just a little bit of silvering in it with the star uh, and the star. But to put the star on, you have to put the star on when the whole thing is together before you put the speaker in. So that's why my speaker is not installed. Also, I'm not sure if this is speaker going to go with. We're going to be offering um, uh, them with uh, the 70 volt system with the transformer or just a straight up 8 ohm. I'm going to see what I can plug into my STD uh, 160 uh, Seaberg because I got a. That's the same room this is going to plug into. I'm going to set this off to the side as well because I'm not going to need this for a bit. So going back to this. Uh, the star so I want to go with a, a, a plain cloth and uh, this is something which is more of a special uh, I was able to find some old uh, scrap material I'm going to go with a white diamond I'm not sure if we're gonna well, we're gonna try to offer these as we find them but uh, there's not much of this material uh, around to uh, make it into speaker cloth here uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go so I got a couple of these right now and to prepare this I ended up just setting it down on the bench and uh, put some flat weight on top of it. Actually, a piece of stainless steel I had, and um, I sized up the back and I ended up taping it off with masking tape. What that does is that keeps it fraying. Now, the back of it you're not going to see, and I could actually put a lot more tape here to make it rigid. But the other thing uh, the masking tape does it keeps it frayed, keeps it in shape. And I was able to do that. Now the front side, I did the same thing with the masking tape, but I only came about a quarter inch in. So if you if you uh, want to get one of these kits and build them and say, hey, look, I like your silver or your champagne cloth that you guys offer for like the Seaberg R or something like that, we'll be able to, you could use it, but you're going to have to stiffen it up some. And another option we are going to have is what if you don't even want to have a speaker in there? A lot of people, most of the time, these things um, are just hanging on the wall and they're for show because they are pretty nice looking speakers uh, and then actually not um, making sound through them so if you never want a speaker want to save the weight on the wall uh, we'll actually have just a, a black panel that uh, we'd ship with it so if you didn't get if you don't get the, the star we will have the speaker installed we we'll have the back bracket have less parts to ship also save for the speaker so I'm going to take these speaker grills I'm going to set these off to the side now uh, along with this box so I'm not going to need this and uh, Let's uh let's start uh, building the speaker. <laughs> oh, the other thing I did do is I pre-drilled the hole in the center. That's something that we will do uh, uh, ahead of time, so you don't have to worry about centering it. Uh, I uh, had that pre pre-drilled for that. Set this off to the side, and we're going to start putting these points together. <laughs> uh, so, so we start by building the point. Now, one thing that the instructions does come with printed instructions and. Uh, one thing that the instructions are very clear on is you want to protect uh, your surface. Now this this green countertop, I'm not sure if it's going to mar or anything. So let's just be a little safe. I'm going to grab a towel and we'll be working on that today. These are called, those are called fingers. So I'm not going to need this ring for right now either. Just careful not to accidentally uh, <laughs> cancel my screen stream. So uh, these are going to be alternating, and I have hardware here set aside. Uh, it comes with all the hardware you need. I just wanted to make sure I got everything. So, um, throw, throw some of these down right now. But uh, keep in mind it does come with all the hardware you need. And light bulbs, and all that fun stuff. One thing I want to make sure is... Uh, you get the kit, you get everything you need. So, we got our purple points, we got our red points. And our first step is to just start pre assembling, but we're going to do this very loose. And this is probably going to be one of the more frustrating parts of the build, just getting everything together. It's a very tight underneath here, so uh, it's going to be uh, interesting. Yep, like that. Just now, if you're doing, I don't even know how I'm going to tighten this. Uh, so, if, if you're doing the uh, 4002 with the yellow, the red, 
it's pretty much going to be red, yellow, red, green, repeat. And um, the other reason, I'm going to get us a screwdriver. One tool that they recommend that is helpful is a uh, flexible screwdriver. Any small screwdriver to help you kind of get this loosely together. But at this point, we're just loosely assembling it because we're going to put it all together the other way. And if you have any questions about Seaburg speakers or <laughs> Wurlitzer speakers, I said Seaburg earlier and I can't get out of my head. Uh, I could try to answer my best. Now, in the 40s, there was a bunch of different models, and there's also Seaberg has a whole bunch. So, uh, pipe up. Otherwise, you can sit and watch, and uh, we'll take it as far as we can. I'm hoping to, even if I get stuck, I'm hoping to get uh, get at least this attached to the ring. Gonna be neat seeing this pile of parts turn into a speaker. Uh, now, those of you who say, "Hey, you know, I, I I want one of these. They look like good quality. I just don't know if I want to mess around with assembling them." We will offer that as a as a uh, assembling. The biggest thing is with these plastic parts, they are gonna ship a lot smaller, a lot cheaper. Um, I think I looked it up. It might be in this brochure. I think it's. Um, just shy of 24 inches. So it's good. It has an 8 inch speaker in the middle. But the, the, the whole thing lit up with those points is, uh, is going to be, I think, just shy of 24 inches. As you can see, it's kind of getting some uh, size here. All right, I need to go red next. Should've, I should have unpacked all these, make it e easier. <laughs> um, the uh, one thing I like to do too, maybe it's just me just trying to be detail oriented. I like to have all the screws and the hardware facing the same way uh, when doing it. It's kind of like when you do an electronics and you say, "Hey, I want to, I want all the diodes or all the uh, resistors with the uh, the gold stripe on the same side of the circuit board." Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a it's a pretty good size based on the pile of parts I started with. And I, I agree. I, I, I um, don't know if you guys saw the video I posted of the uh, reproduction bubble speaker I have. And that's a uh, Rockola. I think the Rockola part number, they made that as a RS3200. Uh, and the original Wurlitzer would be a 4008. So Wurlitzer had the 4000 series part numbers that were the speakers. Alright, now you guys yell at me if I either miss a finger or I uh, <laughs> uh, do two of the same color in a row. Now, uh, keep in mind, uh, this is my first time in assembling one of these. I read the instructions about three times, so uh, I hope I don't have to uh, refer to them live, but if I do, I got them printed Got a printed copy over there, which I will uh, be taking this information I learned today and uh, editing them. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, I missed you popping in there. Uh, thanks for, uh, how you doing? Thanks for popping in. Um, how you doing? What have you been up to? Hopefully, uh, you see, I took all your uh, your advice in setting up the stream. This one was a little bit less rocky. As um, some of you guys may know, it's been a while since I uh, streamed. Uh, once I started with uh, with uh, Victory Glass, I decided to focus. I had to focus on that. We had a lot of work to do at work and uh, moving the business, everything. So I stopped streaming. I was streaming weekly before that. And... Uh, <laughs> you can tell even by my language I'm not doing a good job, but uh, we, uh, I took a break and uh, last week I did my first stream for a while, trying to focus on these, on these screws, getting them together. Yeah, this is, this is a very, 
Oh, I still got more screws. Good. This is a very interesting speaker. And I, I really like the fact that it's, well, you can call it a fantasy or you can call it a prototype, a copy of a prototype. I mean, no matter what, it's a reproduction. So if I'm going to do a reproduction, I might as well do a reproduction of something that wasn't made. Pinbot. <laughs> uh, Pinbot and Galaga. I, I get my Galaga's over there. It's broken. Pinbot. Jeremy's Pinbot kicks my butt every time I play it. So uh, <laughs> I don't know about that game. No, I like it. It's a great game. I just uh, don't get to play it that much. Kind of focusing on all this finagling here. Sweet. Yeah, actually, uh, don't know if you guys know, uh, or big milestone that we recently passed is 3,000 subs. That's great. The channel trailer, is that going to go then on our, on our homepage? So when you tune in, that's the first thing you're going to see? I think... I think right now it's kind of our most popular video that that you see and Jeremy we're gonna have to get together with Aaron again from uh, the solid state amps that uh, we're making at victory we made a change to the prototype or from the prototype to the uh, actual original or the, the production so now we have to change the uh, <clears throat> the install video I added an edit because unfortunately <laughs> people are asking questions what do I do if I have a stepper well we got that take or not a stepper what do I do if I have wall boxes and I want to use your your app well guess what we got that covered watch it's always the last last one that gives the most trouble now sometimes I Hope I don't have to, but it looks like the screw here is built a little bit close. These screws are well, I'm gonna keep trying. Oops. I don't know why she's talking to me. Alright. So it looks like I'm about to get my butt kicked by these last four screws. A little close. At least the good news about them being close to the plastic is I don't have to get a wrench in there. To get that in. Oh, okay. How are we doing? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I'm a subscriber, of course. So I see the most popular video. That would make sense but if you're not a subscriber all right i was wondering because i haven't seen the um the trailer in a while looks like i have one that's being a little bit troublesome here Oh, cool well, thank you yeah I plan on continuing doing these videos working on the workbench I, I liked it uh, previous to this I did it for TV MGC for the uh, show that we go to every year and we'll be at Midwest Gaming Classic again this year making videos having a good time playing pinball so uh, J Sargent the main use that that it was intended for would be uh, as additional speakers. So, I mean, uh, as additional audio. So the, uh, the 1015, the classic bubbler jukebox behind me, has a single, I think it's a 15-inch speaker, uh, field coil. But 
if you had a larger hall, like a dance hall or something like that, and you you wanted uh, or a, a larger establishment, you wanted the music to fill it rather than just coming from one side, you would get auxiliary speakers. So um, they would have these. These could be ceiling mounted when they were originally designed, or they could be uh, uh, on the wall. You'd probably get two or three. Now the amp inside that could power one or two, but if you wanted more power, Wurlitzer sold auxiliary amps. And um, so the problem I'm running into with this one is this one hole here is a little bit too close. So I am going to have to ream it out a little bit. Not unexpected to run into occasionally, but it is just plastic. I actually probably could get this with a X-Acto knife. I'll try that. But um, now, now as, as, yeah, as you as a hobbyist, <laughs> not running a, a haul... Uh, people will get these and hook them into my into really anything you, you oh yeah works fine with an exacto knife by the way this knife's pretty dull so this isn't uh, Bluetooth enabled you could put a little Bluetooth amp in it there's a lot of room let me let me look at this box so I mean it is possible that if you wanted to mount a little Bluetooth receiver to power the speaker uh, you could that that would actually be a great purpose for one of these now a lot of the Wurlitzer collectors who have more of uh you know these bubbler Wurlitzers they like to try you know a lot of people like to try to get uh more accessories to show off of course originals are hard to come by and that's for reproductions but as far i think they i think they kind of look cool well of course i like think cool. I'm, I'm building this now this one's actually going to be mine so i'm building this for myself <laughs> And also get a little experience. So I, I did buy this from work to uh, to put together here. But uh, I have the, the 4008 speaker. I plan on hooking them both up to my jukebox down here because why, why not? But if, uh, if I didn't have a jukebox, I'd definitely think about hook, hooking these up to like a, uh, uh, a stereo or a Bluetooth source. That would be cool. Just throwing a little Bluetooth amp in them. Huh. If Aaron's listening, maybe it's a thought we could... Uh, off a little retro mod kit for these things. All right, looks like that would fit. Uh, just gonna shave a little bit more. Uh, the speaker in this one does not have a voice coil. Ah, uh, no, no, yes, voice coil, no, um, field coil. Field coil and voice coil are different. So, um, back when jukeboxes were coming out rare or magnets were not super powerful now i apologize that uh, the speaker is actually blocking my chat so um i either have to make you there we go all right you're between the red and the purple <laughs> uh so it will no it'll have a voice coil which is required for the speaker to work but it will uh not be a field coil speaker so you could hook this up i think you could hook this up to original world or you just wouldn't run the field coil voltage and what that meant is, so going back to original speakers. So original speakers in these, uh, and I'm thinking like now jukeboxes were coming on the scene in the 30s. So those era of, ju of jukeboxes, the speakers did not have magnets on them. They actually had a high voltage coil, uh, like, like, a, like a pinball solenoid, but big, about the size of the magnet. And... Uh, there we go. That's lining back up. So, <laughs> uh, the, the coil on the back where the magnet normally goes, when you think about any, taking apart any loudspeakers, uh, the coil on the back would be powered by anywhere from 250 to like 400 volts. And this would create a, a magnetic field. And, um, 250 is, is just fine to power them, but they would be up to 400. They'd about a, a 5,200 or 5,200, 4,800 to 5,200 uh, ohm coil, and uh, it's kind of fun. Note the trash can, like uh, like uh, uh, too many hobbies there. Uh, trash can uh, Seabird uh, has the same voice coil that fits on a Wurlitzer. Not voice, coil, yeah, field coil. The field coil that generates the field to allow the voice coil to move. So the voice coil is part of the cone and everything. Uh, this would have. Um, this one's going to have both. All right, so uh, 
I don't have a measuring tape here, but as you can see, we're loosely assembled. And um, I'm going to start the next step. Now, I can't forget this. I think, though, just because it's, I haven't done this before, I'm just going to check my instructions here quickly. My next step, because my next step is to fit the, uh, the ring. Okay. Okay, correct. So, we're going to put the ring in. Now you got the large side and the small side. So the large sides go down. <laughs> uh, and uh, the next step is to fit this together. Putting that in. And I can't forget this. I'm trying a different ring here today actually these screws all have to come out I don't know why I left them in so this screw here I take all these out and put them off to the side these screws actually hold this to the box so them being in the way is going to be kind of a going to be in the way <laughs> so yeah field coil voice coil coincidence yeah I can see that <laughs> um, but uh that's why we're going to offer this. So let's say you said, hey, I want to build a, a USB or a, a, a Bluetooth speaker, but the amp I'm going to get is going to be 4 ohm or this or that. So that's why we're going to offer this with either, uh, because it's an 8-inch speaker it takes. We're going to offer it with the 70-volt, the, the standard 8 ohm for uh, hooking up to, like, if you have a surround sound. So let's say you have speakers in your game room. That'd be actually a really good place. So you got your game room set up. You got a stereo on one side. You want to put four speakers in there to put music in there. So when you have a party and you have people over, that'd be pretty cool. There you go. <laughs> yes, buy several using for surround sound. Sure, why not? Uh, so therefore, you could use them with the eight ohm speakers that come in, hook them up to any stereo. But uh, if you want to do something special, say you need a forum or whatever, why buy a speaker that you're not going to use, just have to rip it apart? So at that point, we would sell it with just the blank out panel in there. So basically, what, what they're telling you with this one, when you're putting it together, if you don't have the ring in place, you're going to have a dickens of a time getting it in place once you start putting this together. course let me rotate this so you can see where I'm working <laughs> and of course they light up cool too so it's like it's like neon but it's actually like it's like neon signs kind of but it's relative to the coin op hobby which is yeah, something else I enjoy I'm using actually 632 nuts and bolts We'll see what we come, what, what we decide to, to ship the kit with. It's slightly smaller diameter makes it good. I think some versions of this came with uh, four millimeters, but I want to make make sure we have good, easy to assemble parts. Come on! Of course, the last screw is going to give me the most trouble. I think I got it started. <laughs> <laughs> Pinball Mayhem Jacket. We, I, I don't think we've made those yet. We, uh, me and uh, me and Jeremy talked about getting some art made eventually, or at least get our logo reimaged. I mean, our logo is something that we kind of just put together. Oh man, how many years ago? Three years now? Four years? Jeremy's gonna yell at me. I don't remember. Yeah, it was uh, right around when uh, Total Mucor Annihilation was coming out. That's where I uh, got the inspiration for some of the colors. Yeah, excuse me, this last bolt is kicking my butt right now.
five, five years. You see? Mm -hmm. All right, so why is this not going well? I think the purple may need a little bit of plastic trimmed out. So let me uh, let me open this back up and give it a give it a look see. It's always the last screw that kicks your butt, right? <laughs> yeah, you probably cheated and checked online. And our first video was a uh, five second test I took of a Xenon I was working on at the time uh, for an LED board I made. It was just, uh, we created the channel and we're like, well, we need to put a video up. We need to put something up because you don't don't open up the uh, realms without a, without a video. So let's just make sure we got something. And then I, I'm like, well, I got this on my phone. We can upload this right now. So we threw it up there. I don't think we ever took it down. We were saying, oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll delete that once we get some real content. But it's, why? It's lights lighting on a, on a modified Xenon. And now I'm back to lights lighting on something modified. Flashing lights. <laughs> oh, that's a little better. What I do is I just... Uh, a little bit bigger just so I could get in there okay so we have it that far we don't need any more of these small screws I hope now let me uh, let me grab a tape measure and answer the question of how big this actually is It's growing. All right. Yep. Right now it's uh, like 23 and three quarters. Yeah, I'd say 23 and three quarters as it sits right now. Yep. <laughs> well, thank you for stopping in, Jeremy, and uh, appreciate the, the, the chat. Uh, this is uh, coming together quickly. Let me check my instructions. I got the ring together. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I thought. All right, next step. We're going to install this, this, this speaker box. And you ask why? Well, it's the next step. So, one thing we're going to look at is looking at the speaker box. On one side, there's a metal hole and a larger diameter hole and a core. Uh, for the, the strap and I got a notch and the other side we got nothing now the point sits between these two so it's gonna sit up so uh, what pretty much this is the bottom now the reason it has this this uh, plate here is for volume and that's telling you that this was made two original specs so this is a uh, volume that would be your volume uh, if you had a, a, a volume in those, uh, like the 70 volt systems, speakers actually had a, a volume or an L pad in them. And uh, I just want to take a quick look. So, based on my original picture, what I found was the red is what I believe is the top spike. Now, it doesn't matter which red, I'm going to go with that red right there. And the reason is, is I know there's a scratch on one of those points that I put in there playing around with this earlier, and I want to make sure I put that towards the top. The next step is we're going to put this on top. I know you guys are thinking, what about the grill? Trust me, this is the way you're supposed to do it. I'm going to now start these into uh, the bobs. Now, you don't we're not going to tighten down these points until we're almost done. So they are. This whole thing is going to be a little wobbly. And this is kind of the, the fun part. By fun, I mean it can be a little frustrating. I think getting everything to line up. I 
think I got it. There we go. One down. One down, eight to go. <laughs> How are we doing for time? I'm going to do is I'm going to just work my way around. Now what they say, instructions say you want to work your way side to side like, uh, like you're putting tires on a car. I dropped my screw again. This is where magnetic screwdrivers are horribly handy. So if you ever put bolts in a, in a tire, same concept. You want to just work your way around the outside. What this is going to do is going to do two things. It's going to start pulling the inside of these points in so they fit in that ring. And it's going to also kind of put it together. So what we're going to do, just to kind of skip ahead while I'm putting these in here, is I'm just starting these by hand. Don't want to cross thread. It's going into plastic. Once again, going crisscross. So I'm going to do that one. I'll do this one. I want to do this evenly. This is going to pull that whole circle together. And the last thing we're going to, well, once this is all uh, all these screws are started, we're going to actually slip the fabric in between the ring and the top. Then we'll start, then we'll be close to putting it together, but not quite. <laughs> all right, I got four down, four to go. Yeah, uh, we're, I'm going to start doing more of these videos just working. Now, uh, those of you may not picked it up, I work now for Victory Glass Restoration Jukebox Parts. And um, I'm going to be doing more. I'm still going to be doing videos like this. I might do more videos like this, testing or installing. Maybe just installing products. Don't like the going a little, a little crooked. This is pretty tight. So uh, I will be doing assembly for stuff maybe we're selling. I also got uh, uh, testing out products um, or working on jukeboxes. Just kind of getting general knowledge out there. We also are going to be starting doing uh, videos at uh, Victory Glasses YouTube page. More of those are going to be like informative, like a jukebox of the week. Okay. And go and get a little goofy. This is where all these screws are important. This is kind of the moment of is this going to break or is it going to go together right or not? Come on. Looking forward to having the speaker, not to, to messing it up, putting it together. Now I see why having the speaker grill installed at this point could be an issue, because it could be a little bit of trouble right there. Now one thing is, I, you don't want to cross thread these. You also want them to, to go, you want to push, you want to get a few threads in, but you want this loose. Alright, I got one more screw to go in. The interesting part is it went from a fairly floppy mess, you know, assembly, to uh, now it's fairly getting pretty rigid. Now the nice part about these, yeah, it's it, it's not. If you never installed something, I wouldn't call this as like Lego level, but I definitely. I think it's uh, it's doable. Anybody in the uh, pinball realm working on your own games, well, most of our followers would be in the realm of there. Huh. There we go. It's getting there. I got all the screws started, and it's loose.
All right, just verifying I am staying with my uh, times. Next step is I'm gonna once again locate the top. I wanna be working, so that's my top, and here is my fabric I'm gonna be going with. Put this off to the side. All right, so the next step is I'm gonna work this in carefully. And uh, now one thing I want to make sure is because it's going to echo the 1015 or uh, also the other the other speaker. So if you want the 4008, uh, I did a video very recently on that one. Uh, the bubbler speaker is called. Um, but the diamonds have to go vertically. And you notice the back side is very white. Now on the original 4000 or 1015 is much more gold than these. This is kind of what was originally in the countertops or close to the countertop ones, which would be the Wurlitzer 7161. Uh, but we actually sell scraps like this for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure when I put this in there that I position it so it's vertically, diamonds are sitting up and down. Now this is something I was afraid of would happen. I'm hitting the screws. So I gotta figure out what to do here. Should have marked this somehow. It's, it's not gonna lay flat that way. I did mark it. So I think my problem is, is I'm hitting the screws when I put it in, and I need it to fit, uh, fit nice and tight. And I don't think the instructions say anything about cutting it. Uh, push the ring some together. Okay, so next thing, turn around. Allow speaker grow cloth to be inserted between the diffuser ring and speaker by housing. You could do this with a screwdriver. Careful not to damage the diffuser. All right, so. My thought, so if I let it roll up, it's going to wrinkle. And that's my fear. Maybe I'm supposed to, maybe you're supposed to make it roll up a bit. But then how is it going to diffuse? I am, I'm going to make the executive decision and do, do some relief cuts on this. What I did before I cut this is I actually put the box on top of it and I traced it and then I put the ring on top of it and traced it again. So a few relief so if I cut right in the middle of these where the screws are, it should my fear is I don't want it to look like garbage with the um, if you could see some of these uh, diffuser rings are more transparent than others. I don't want you to see the wood. I want you to see just grill cloth. But the um, masking tape is going to keep it together. I'm just going to cut these a little further because I was a little bit light on the first time. There. All right, let's try that again. Hey, thank you, Jay Sargent. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. I'll uh, I'll be I'll be here more often. Don't know when, but uh, stay tuned and uh, I'll keep posting. Uh, trying to get ahead of when I am going to stream. All right. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying just to kind of work this around the screws where I cut it. If I have to take it out and do it again, I'll do it again. I want to just make sure I get far enough back and I don't wrinkle up the, uh, I have a feeling I'd have to cut it again. But you know, it's not a big deal to take it in and out. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys at Midwest Gaming Classic coming up in April. They say don't damage the, the, the diffuser ring, but I'm uh, more concerned about the grill cloth. That's a little harder to replace. Okay, so I got it in. 
it looks like it will sit flat if I had more relief cuts. So I'm going to just take it out again and cut those a little bit further. Just a hair further. I actually go upside down so I can see, get a gauge of my cut. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. All right, back we go. Okay, I got to keep telling myself, that's why I want to keep this upright. I'm just going to double check. That's the top. All right. Keep in mind, you got to keep the top top. Because if I put this whole thing together, and I was already and done, and these diamonds were sideways, I or crooked, I would be mad at myself. And I'd have to start over. I wouldn't, wouldn't stand for that. At the least, guys, I want to get this to the point where it's assembled. It's taking a little longer than I thought it would, actually. Let's just get this underneath that lip. And now, I'm just going to work it around those screws with my screwdriver. That's sitting better. I may have to do one more set of cuts. Laying a little bit better. Hmm. A little wavy. I think it could be better. And I got some room. I hate to say it, I'm going to do one more set of cuts, just a little bit deeper, just don't like that, just like an eighth inch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight okay last time this time is going to be it top is still oh no it's not all right that is the top that is the top all right let's go for this let's see what i get well don't forget you can always uh, tune into the stream fast forward to the future see how i do See if I give up and I take this on to another night. My dogs start whining. I gotta gotta end it and let them out. Right now. Alright, that looks like that's right. I like that. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm pr pushing on the fabric. I'm probably going to make two rounds. I'm going to get one to get a position. I'm going to keep pushing on it with a screwdriver underneath the ring. So if I do, because this fabric is actually not, I mean, it's it's not super strong. I mean, it's, 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 it's nice looking stuff. And the normal grills are starch. They're stiff. You don't have to deal with this as much. Just got to get it in there. Probably cut some relief cuts. There you go. There. And now I am not going to put that star on until I'm done bolting this down. All right. So the next step is to slowly work this down out. Ugh.
looks like these two are going to be a little bit of a trouble. This is what they mean by don't break anything. And what I'm doing is I'm actually pushing this fabric up underneath it as I'm cinching this down to try to make it pull tighter and look good. Unfortunately, if I break something, I gotta start over. Whew, all right. It's pretty good, I think. Let's just make sure red point is up. That's the bottom. This red point is up. So far, so good. All right, so this is the bottom. Next step is to start with the wiring. Underneath the speaker. And to me, it appears that I can, I can tighten these down a lot more. I'm going to cinch these screws down before I start putting the wiring in because the wiring only needs. A little bit and I don't need this much screw exposed all right and just so you guys know I'm probably gonna be going till 9 Got some other stuff to do before I call it a night here. So uh, let's hope I can get this together, or at least to a good stopping point, and then. And all right. So I'm going to start with the with the wiring. Just positioning it in one socket at a time. I'm going to do is get everything positioned. I'm going to come back and uh, tighten them down once they're all in. The other thing about there are some repos. I actually have a an older reproduction of these. This is not nearly as <laughs> not nearly as uh, as true to the originality. And that uses little C7 bulbs, or this uses much larger light bulbs. Oop, too tight. Uh-oh. Alright, i got to untangle this before I go any further, because this is going to cause problems. Can't have any knots. Like that knot, because that knot's going to cause problems. Problems, problems, problems. All right, let's get this out of here. And now this cable, oops. Supposed to go through there, but it doesn't. Okay. So next up, before I tighten these down, I'm actually going to put the bulbs in. Because why not? And it would be a smarter of me. I want to put the bulbs in while there's still some flex in these. I mean, you can get them before. You may have to. I mean, after you're gonna have to bend them a bit. The biggest thing is when we finally do the final tighten down, we don't want these bulbs touching the plastic. Anything plastic. There we 
to go. And right now they're super easy to put in. Now that you've got to change them, it's going to be different. That's why you know, I use all brand new bulbs. Let's see, I got three. Now before you um, commit to LEDs, if you do that route, one thing I just want to remind you is that blue plastic is a filter and um, or, you know this plastic is a filter so if if you put start putting LEDs in you want to make sure that it lights up properly some I, I've seen this some uh, some things I've been playing around with LEDs you put a red ball behind a or you put a, a yellow ball behind a red filter a red plastic and you get yellow light through it looks looks kind of icky so with this, these are sun colored. You want a, a, a nice color spectrum bulb. And uh, that's going to make it glow a nice white behind it, but also give you the color on the, uh, on the points. It's got to be these little 7.5 waters. Looks like I have to clean up my floor when we're done with this. <laughs> what I'm going to do probably not going to get to the speaker installed. Okay, so what I'm going to do now before I go any further, I'm just going to do a quick power check to make sure all my light bulbs work. So, next step, tighten this down. And no, I do not want to leave it plugged in because some of these are touching the plastic. We can't have this. So I am backing these ba as far back as I can. And this is the point of actually tightening the bulbs down. If I need to bend these brackets back a bit, I will. So this is... Oh, I forgot something. I think I forgot to tighten down these points. I think I'm supposed to do that before. Let me uh, let me check. Uh, no. So uh, I screwed up, but that's how we do this in video. I was supposed to tighten down these points prior to putting the light bulbs in. So uh, the good news is, is I can get one of them very easy with a super long screwdriver. And the other one will see how I get to it. I have to take out the light bulb. The good news is I didn't tighten down the light bulbs yet. Oh, don't want to mar it up and it's sliding off my cloth. Okay. So I'm just tightening down the easy one to get to just because it's easy. And I gotta figure out the next one as I go. It's gonna give me at least everything's gonna be nice and cinched. And you don't have to tart these down, you're not building a car. This is literally a speaker hanging on the wall. So we don't want to break anything by cranking it. Alright. Good news, with those, those not tightened down, I'm able to get in here with my really long screwdriver.
This is a Wyco PH2 by 300. You ask yourself, self, where do I get a screwdriver like that? I don't know. <laughs> when I worked on copiers for a living, we used them. And that's how I ended up with it. It's great to get through case. It's actually, the screwdriver works great for a Seaberg. Working on a mechanism. I had to get the clutch out. Buddy says to me, "Well, how do you do that without taking the, uh, without taking the uh, magazine off?" I'm like, "Oh, well, yeah, just move the clutch over to where like the gray box is, or no, not to the gray box, to the center." Yeah, that's good. Like I said, we're not going for super duper tight. Move the gray box, move it over to where the gray box is, or to the center, and then I can get the the two clutch screws with this bad boy and then uh, I was able to pull the clutch out through the gray box area this is on my uh, 1975 uh, jukebox now I wouldn't know about it A, B or C that era but for slightly newer sorry if I'm missing chat kinda Nothing new in chat. Another option. These are hard to get to. You can get a screwdriver down in there. This one seems to be more of a trouble than the other ones. <coughs> Some of these are angled. I might take another pass with that small screwdriver just to make sure I got everything tight. I feel like I did eight already, but I didn't. take another pass with the other screwdriver just FYI so I'd say for your standard skill set guy probably plan on an evening put one of these together depends on if you get the one with or without the grill cloth or the star so remember without the star I would have already pre-assembled the box with the speaker and the brackets. So if I, we did not have that center star, if I had the right speaker, which I don't, I would be pretty much almost done here. But I still probably have another half hour. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Oh yeah, that one was loose. They say a flexible screwdriver. I don't have one of those. I used to. Don't know where it went. There. There we go. Now I can go back to these lights. And don't be afraid if after these are tight, if you have to bend these brackets back a little bit you just don't want those bulbs touching any plastic and these brackets are aluminum so they're pretty malleable don't doesn't doesn't take pliers or anything just a little bit of a little bit of forming if you need to and keep in mind these screws I'm tightening down now do go into plastic so once again no need to get uh, too crank heavy and I would recommend with these just to go around in circle order and the reason for that is uh, if you're going side to side like a uh, like the other when we're putting it together that's that's where you want to get it lined up but this way we got uh, if we're pulling it down any, we're going to pull it down evenly across. Either that or you could make two passes. Okay. That might 
may be a little bit too tight. I heard a crack. I'm just leaving that one where it is. sliding off all right so I'm literally on the last screw for these lights all right I'm just going to do another visual check make sure none of the lights are touching plastic I want about a quarter inch of space at least they all work okay um, as I kind of said before, uh, I got the wrong speaker, so I am not going to be installing a speaker today, but I will get this fully assembled otherwise. So the next step is, kind of see to this side, is I want to put the star on. I got this star. I want the points to line up with the red points. That's the way at least I want it. So when we find that hole, I'm going to just take my tiny Phillips screwdriver. Now this fabric is smooth enough that I should be able just to do that. Push her through. Now one thing, I'll work it down. I want to avoid twisting it too much. I don't want to accidentally catch the fabric and rip it. So what's, what's happening is I'm pulling the fabric into the hole. Because I actually purposely made sure that this was a tight fit. So I, when I drilled this hole, it does go in. There we go. Best way to do this is just visually, if you're happy with that. Uh, I think that's a pretty visual lineup. Of course, keep in mind when you're doing this, it's going to be on the wall away from you. Right, and I am just going to then flip it over and throw the nut on. Looks like I, there's no room for a washer. Check before I tighten it. So much going on with getting everything lined up. I am going to be pretty darn happy with that. Alright, one last thing to do before I call it done for tonight is uh, there's this bracket that goes in here. And uh, if the speaker was in there, If the speaker was in there, you would uh, install that first. But uh, I'll be I'll be swapping the speaker out later. I want to finish this though. Speaker would just be installed with those. All right. How are we doing for time? Eight fifty four. I'd have to check my stats. I don't even know how long I've been streaming. Kind of get an idea of what it takes to put one of these together. All right. So. My tools off the side here. I was a little bit messy because I was streaming. Had to play around with the bracket a little bit but you know, minus the fact that I don't have the speaker in there the speaker is done <laughs> there you go let's see if I can get it all on sc screen that's the thing is it's very <laughs> uh, it's actually a pretty darn good size 
And let me get a measurement again. Yeah, I would say plan for 24 inches. Well, let's measure the back, just just so I can tell you guys the truth. Of course, I can't because I got the box. 23 inches and four. See, I hard to tell without getting a big caliber out, but my stars lined up, my diamonds lined up vertically with the mounting points. I'm really happy with that. But now you ask yourself, well, what does it look like? Nice. Let's see if I can turn off the other lights, get a good glow. Doesn't do it justice. Has a nice glow across the inside. Get some uh, purple. The, the nice thing is, is the behind it kind of outlines it on the wall. That looks pretty darn cool. Wow. I'm sure the reason why uh, they didn't make these is they had went from the stainless. They went to this, and uh, I'm happy with that. Really happy with that. That looks great. Uh, I'm gonna get a speaker. I'm gonna hang it on my wall or. I'm going to check to make sure the speaker I got is the right one I want to put in it. I uh, just kind of grabbed one off the shelf, uh, uh, not even looking at it. So i got to make sure we see what's fi uh, what will go with my STD-160. And uh, I'm going to actually use this as a speaker. But uh, without a speaker, if, if I was just going to hang it on the wall for looks, I may not even put a speaker in. One less thing, a little bit less weight, and uh, it's easy enough for this model... If it was like a tonalier kit, one of those, um, if, I, if I was building one of those, I'd put a speaker in it. It's way buried deep in it. This one, it's two screws to get into the panel, see the speaker, and then you can install it. So if I was putting one of these up and I wasn't planning on putting audio through it, I wouldn't get a speaker because um, then uh, a little bit a little bit easier, a little lighter handle. Now, right now, weight's pretty good. thing I like about this kit come you know it got everything there it comes with this nice wooden base you don't really see too much of it once it's on the wall but you know you got a nice wooden solid piece got the volume control if you need it you got the hole for the speaker wires uh you can loop the power through here if you want to you know, come up through here and out i'd have to take the plug off to do that uh, just to kind of make sure this you know, routes a little different on the wall if you want you got a keyhole to hang it hang it already which is kind of cool if you're going to hang it from the ceiling, you would use the center hole and mount it. Um, but uh, I'm extremely happy with that. That's uh, that's going to be a cool addition to my wall, to my jukebox collection, and uh, it's it's going to go up there with pride. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, <laughs> I haven't drank anything for two hours. Thank you guys for watching, tuning in. Uh, make sure if you need any jukebox parts, manuals, anything of like that, go over to victoryglass.com. We got tons of parts, more stuff coming in. We're going to have these speaker kits available. Uh, all the options, I got about six different grill cloth options we're going to have. Plus, as we find other, other cool things like this diamond cloth, if we have some limited edition stuff, we'll put it out there. We'll have the colorful points for the 4002. We're going to have the 4001 points as well, like these. And uh, um, if there's a the demand, we'll bring back the 4,000 stainless steel or the, the, the chrome steel ones. So I uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in, chatting with me, and uh, building a speaker with me tonight. I, I got it done in one night. I didn't give up. It's because of you guys. And uh, stay tuned for more streams. Ed's uh, Pinball Mayhem Workbench will continue when I'm working on the next project. It might be that vector over there. It might be this 1015 might be some weird wireless stuff from 1947 46 let's see what we got to work on so stay tuned make sure you like and follow uh look for our live streams jeremy streams every weekend pinball and i'm going to be just streaming whatever i'm working on <laughs>